Hey, Santa Graver here. Welcome back to my channel. I think this is going to be the first of a mini series, if you will, on the abstract class pattern, uh, diving deeply, more deeply into the different classes and the different techniques you can do with pattern. And this is because I use pattern every day in my composition process. It is an integral part of my music composition process. And so why not look a little deeper and show you what I'm finding. So we're going to start with pretty much this list here. Under patterns, you can see there are 105 items under this abstract class alone. And we're going to start with this here, our list that has 21 items. And we're going to just explore three today. And that is our PSEEK, our PSER, and PRAND. And if you've seen my other videos, you have seen PSEEK and PRAND used time and time again. So let's just go ahead and explore that and use our bell sound that you had just heard. And always, um, just if you needed ideas for scales and note degrees, you can use the scale directory. And pretty comprehensive list at that. And so let's just go ahead and choose our basic Ionian, which is our major mode. Put it in there. And voila, you have your degree values in semitones. So just a bit of syntax for you there if you needed some ideas for scales and modes and all of that. So let's go ahead and evaluate our bell synth def. And begin with PSEEK. So PSEEK is that basic pattern you may have seen time and time again, depending on if you've been following the videos in my channel or Eli Field Steel's channel, for instance. And it, it's just a sequence of values in a list and run sequentially before completing that cycle, before the, the end of the list there. So here's a bit of syntax that I pulled from this PSEEK help file here. It's on the bottom of the page. Uh, it's basically a sequence of values 1, 2, and 3 repeated twice using this value here outside the brackets. So we have here six iterations of uh, those values, so six values. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. If you were to go to 5, for instance, as expected, it'd be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and 7 or more would return as nil after completing those, those six values, those, those steps. So let's go ahead and put it in a musical context where we have our bell sound, and using our rate, that, that, that sense of pitch, we're going to convert it using our MIDI, uh, MIDI ratio method. And here are the degrees in semitones of our natural minor scale. And you should hear it played three times. Pretty straightforward there. Now, down here, the syntax following, we have something in PSIC I have never seen before, and I did pull this up from our help file here, uh, this uh, second one here. And that is our offset to, or, or any number at that. So let's just do 10 iterations of these steps and see what that means. We are starting on value 3. That, that is offsetting, that is pushing two values over, starting on three before going on to four, finishing that cycle, and moving back through one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four. In this case, 10 iterations. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if it was going through uh, with three, it would start, of course, on four before running back over to the, the next, uh, the cycle, one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and hear in context here. I believe that started on value seven, which is G, respectively, se semi seven semitones above C there. So let's start at one. So it should start on that E flat sound. And there you go. All right, this is a little nifty one right here. So uh, PSeq using the values one and two and repeating it between one and three times. So let's do six iterations here. All right, that's pretty interesting. So in this case, it only repeated twice. If it were three times, you wouldn't see the nil as, as two return items there. Let's see if we can get all three values. There it is. One repeated once. All right, and repeated three times. So I thought that was kind of cool that that is an option there. So I have my natural minor scale with the chance of repeating either or playing through once, either once, or repeating all the way up to six times. So let's see how many times Super Collider chooses. Two times. And I realize that's not the, not the minor scale, and I can't remember which scale it was, so there, there you go. That, that degree one, that nice, um, I think it's called the Super Locrian scale. Yeah, I think that's the technical term. It was the low two that I think it's a it's a flat second degree. I think that's what that one is for. All right, so now you have seen this in the context in my other videos, and that is just using the infinity value. And so on. All right, so that is PSeq, and I think that was everything I used from the help file. So yeah, always refer to the help file for your, for your purposes there. So very good. Okay, so with PSer, it's something I haven't used before until today. I like it. It is like PSeq, but instead, the repeats variable is what determines the cycle, not the array, not the list. So in this example, we have the repeats variable being five. So with five iterations, we have this. One, two, three, one, two. It doesn't stop at three because of the five values. So let's go ahead and add a piecer to this. We will have our sequence, one, two, three, run seven times. So as you may have guessed, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And this will be iterated 10 times. As we can see here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, before starting over. So right at that one, that last that first one, that is our seventh iteration before starting over. And let's go ahead and put it in a musical context. Eight times through. So we went all the way up to the octave before doing zero, three, five again. Now let's go ahead and do the eight values and repeat it four times. And 
And this is where I thought PSIR was cool and why I'm going to use PSIR in the future. It kind of sounds like an arpeggiator of some sort and I think I have already some cool ideas, uh, something in mind for this pattern. And the more I explore it and the more I build off of it, I will definitely show you. All right, and moving along down to Rand, P. Rand, which you may have seen several times in my videos if you've been following my channel. It's uh, selecting a value from a given list and selecting it randomly. And these values inside the list may repeat. So let's go ahead and take a look at this example here. All right, so you can see that both values three and values one repeated before the six was returned, before that uh, number of items was returned. So let's go ahead and hear it in context. Perfect, so you did hear a couple pitches repeat. I think actually just one pitch repeated twice. And I think it was three. All right, and I did test this. Uh, this is not in the syntax help file, I don't think, but I did add a p sir and embedded it with a p rand. So uh, following these few scale degrees in this minor scale, uh, you can see that it's a bit of repetition and repeat, something maybe like uh, an arpeggiator would do but let's hear it, maybe not. All right, so a little bit more random at, at that, and that may sound obvious, but not as much, I don't think, as implemented, uh, that arpeggiation implemented as you would have in a piecer with another piecer embedded, or maybe with a sequence embedded. So something to consider. All right, so here we can put in a sub pattern where we have one value and then a sequence as I believe three values. This will be um, three values. Um, at first, I thought this pseq was considered one value in the list, but it is three values. Um, but that is selected at random, or t values two, three, four, and five. So let's go ahead and, and see what we get with that. All right, so you do see that that sequence was picked, and then one more value before six was returned. Let's try that again. All right, so this time it was picked twice, but it stops at 10. Had it been more than six iterations, or actually I should say um, a bigger repeats variable, it would have continued on with 20 and 30 before randomly se selecting the next item. So I think that's pretty cool. And let's see, I think I put a bit of context here for our natural minor scale degrees. So in this case we have 0, 3, 5, 7 was picked, then 0, 0, 3, 5, and 7 would have been the subsequent value, except we had already come to that eighth iteration. So something to look into there. All right, let's put this in a musical context. Whoa, so that was just zero and it's octave 12. Let's, let's see if we can hear a bit of a, a, a P seek in there. Three, five, seven, you're supposed to hear like the minor third, fourth and fifth, yes. I was getting worried. <laughs> so yes, you heard that again, let's, let's, let's try it again. Right. 
there we go. So some things to work with and, and things to embed and things to include like sub patterns and all of that. So yes, that was PSEEK, PSER, and PRAND. Uh, we'll get into more uh, random techniques in the following video like PXRAND and PWRAND and all of that, maybe PSHUF. Um, but yeah, let's uh, stop it there. Uh, hopefully that is something to uh, draw from. Hopefully it inspires you. I am definitely going to work with PSER in terms of uh, sequences and arpeggiations and maybe uh, developing an arpeggiator of some sort in Super Collider. So if I do build off something, I will definitely show you. Um, so thank you again for watching and listening. Always be on the lookout for some sound experimentation every Thursday. And I did want to mention that my debut album, Sunkissed, is out on Bandcamp, Bandcamp and Spotify and also SoundCloud. So I will be sure to put that in the description below. Thank you for, to those of you taking the time to listen to the preview and also the full album here on YouTube. But uh, yeah, always uh, consider checking it out on those other uh, sources there too. So uh, yes, I appreciate you watching and listening and I will see you next time for more Super Collider.